Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is premature ejaculation. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about the uh, difficulties that some men and women have in achieving uh, sexual satisfaction. And of course, we have a urologist from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the University of Pittsburgh Medical School, uh, Dr. Michael Chancellor. And of course, Dr. Chancellor, let us welcome you uh, to the show this morning. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Haney, for having me. And to tell you how delighted we are to uh, have you. And uh, I guess, Dr. Chancellor, to say up front that uh, this indeed is a first for us <laughs> uh, because uh, we've never had an opportunity to uh, deal with this as an issue before or any of these uh, sexual kinds of issues that uh, we will deal, have to deal with today. But I think that uh, up front we have to uh, both admit that uh, we're talking about something that's natural. Yes. And uh, in doing so, uh, to find that uh, approximately 35 to 70 percent of the population might be impacted by uh, what is generally called PM, premature ejaculation, I think that it's uh, uh, sort of worthy of us to try to at least bring to the attention of uh, our audience uh, some of the problems that are generally associated with that. Uh, Dr. Chancellor, let's start off by having you, uh, before you get into your research dealing uh -huh. with PE, I mean uh, PM, let's start off by having you to give us some information about your background, your education, and some of the things that were important in eventually leading you to uh, become involved in this particular topic. Sure. So mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a urologist. Mm -hmm. I'm a professor of urology mm -hmm. at the University of Pittsburgh mm -hmm. Medical Center. Mm -hmm. And I've been there about 10 years. Mm -hmm. I grew up in Detroit mm -hmm. and I went to school at the University of Michigan in Ann mm -hmm. Arbor. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, did my residency at Choose Urology because mm -hmm. I wanted to do a surgical specialty. Mm -hmm. But yet urology, as opposed to general surgery, mm -hmm. has more hands hands-on in the office mm -hmm. too. There's much more interaction with patients mm -hmm. and more dealing with elderly patients. Mm -hmm. I enjoy that. So when I finished my uh, training at Ann Arbor, Michigan, mm -hmm. uh, I went to, out to the Columbia University in New York City mm -hmm. there where I did a fellowship in a incontinence or the lower urinary tract, mm -hmm. uh, the plumbing problems. Mm -hmm. I specialize in that. Mm -hmm. I met my wife who's also a doctor when she was mm -hmm. at NYU at Bellevue. She mm -hmm. did her training there. Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, I w wanted to go into academic medicine mm -hmm. as opposed to uh, just seeing patients. Mm -hmm. I think I really like that the physician scientist role mm -hmm. where I do about half time patient, mm -hmm. but half time translational mm -hmm. research. Mm -hmm. So if I see a problem that clinically, mm -hmm. I can go into the lab and do the experiment and hopefully develop something better mm -hmm. that I can bring back. Mm -hmm. from the bench top to the bedside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> doctor, we know that uh, this whole issue of uh, uh, PM mm -hmm. is so very, very important, but as we indicated earlier, when we talk about sex, yeah. uh, we know that uh, uh, it's natural. Yeah. And we also know that uh, there are uh, two or three specific purposes for that. And, uh, and I think it uh, depends upon how the mind conceives of it, but uh, we all have to think in terms of procreation. I mean, uh, there's no way around that. Uh, right. We have to talk and deal with it. And we all have to think in terms of some of the uh, therapeutic uh, things that uh, uh, sex might be used for. And so within that context, let's talk about uh, this whole issue of uh, PM. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, we didn't know what, uh, that there was an initial <laughs> uh, for it uh, prior to uh, talking to you in reference to it. But it's uh, pre... Uh, uh, pre uh, ejaculation, pre ejaculation. Right. And, 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 and so let's let's start. what does that mean and, 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 and how do you go about discussing that let's talk about that well the first you just said it how do you go about discussing it mm -hmm. and it, it's hard for most people mm -hmm. people are so embarrassed mm -hmm. by any type of sexual dysfunction mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that it takes them they do the internet they go to the bookstore mm -hmm. but it's so hard for them to tell not only their loved one mm -hmm. but their doctor mm -hmm. and as a urologist as I specialize more mm -hmm. I realize men and women mm -hmm. complain about difficulty with their sex life mm -hmm. and if you remember up to about 10 years ago mm -hmm. when Viagra first came out if you remember you know an, Everybody was so embarrassed mm -hmm. with the ability to get an erection, mm -hmm. ED, mm -hmm. until the Bob Doe made some commercial mm -hmm. and got on TV. Then all of a sudden, the big taboo's been lifted. Mm -hmm. And men who can't achieve erection mm -hmm. was able to seek help. Mm -hmm. So the premature ejaculation mm -hmm. 
is actually the second step mm -hmm. that men now feel comfortable talking about. You know, mm -hmm. hey, can I? Do you have some samples of Viagra mm -hmm. or Cialis? Mm -hmm. But a condition where there's no good treatment is mm -hmm. actually lasting long enough mm -hmm. for the man and his sexual partner to be satisfied or premature ejaculation. Mm -hmm. There's no treatment, mm -hmm. and yet it hasn't sort of come out of the closet. Mm -hmm. So premature ejaculation mm -hmm. is more common than erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, doctor, let's uh, take this first commercial break, and then we'll come back and we'll bring it out into, o into the open during the second segment. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. This is the topic is